looking at a development question here so uh, with a development what we have to do is we have to take a 3d object so in this case it's a jewelry box with a curved lid on it and we have to unfold that 3d object into a flat image so almost like unpacking it um, so what I would always recommend is before you actually tackle into answering the question will be to sketch out just a rough idea of what you think the layout of this answer is going to look like and it just helps you plan out how many surfaces you're going to have and how they might connect to each other or where your fold lines will be. I've purposely picked a question that has a curved surface in it so you can see the lid on this jewellery box is curved and you can see the curvature of that in the end view here in this particular drawing. So if my orthographic view is already set up, like I said, I would try and encourage you to do a 3D sketch or sorry, a 2D sketch of what your answer is going to look like just so when you go over here you've it all planned out and you're not going to be thinking or making mistakes in the answering stage of the question. So looking at this particular drawing, if possible I would always advise to start with the base of an object. Now it doesn't always work out that way but if possible use that as your starting surface. So let's say I have a flat surface for my base. Now attached onto the base if it was to fold out will be the two side pieces and again they're just rectangular in shape so they would attach to the left and right also if you can just label these as you're going through them it just helps to keep track of what you're doing so we have the base piece and we have the two side pieces attached on so they're folded down from that base piece now to the front and back of the base you're going to have the same sort of panel so you have this front panel here which will just be rectangular again so that's your front piece and you have the back which is identical. Now what happens then is you have the lid. So the lid is a curved surface, it's wrapping around this semicircular shape on the side pieces. So we'll have to include them on our sides as well now, so they'll be semicircular. And what's going to happen is our lid is going to wrap around them. So I'll be going through the detail of this in a second, but basically what we will do is we will try and break up the circumference of that semicircular curve into sections, six sections, but I'll go through it in a second. We'll take each of those sections and we'll walk them out six times. So we will end up with a long surface, which is flat, which is made up of those six spacings, and that will be our lid, which is going to wrap around that curved surface. So up in my orthographic views, my front view and my plan view are fine. My end view, I'm going to have to do a bit of work with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my curved section, which is a semicircle. I have the center point of it marked off very obviously. And I'm going to split that up using a 30 degree angle. So within a semicircle, there's 180 degrees. If I break it up into 30 degree sections, I should get six different sections. So that will involve spinning around my 30, 60 degree set square to get all the angles I need. But each interval is 30 degrees from the previous one. And that should give you six identical sections. Just out of habit, and to make it easier for the examiner to mark it, we'll just label these. So we'll start off with the back piece being zero, and then we'll walk it out one, two, three, four, five, and we'll end up, our finishing point will be point six. Okay, so I'm going to go over and start my development now. Like I said, if possible, start with the base piece because everything will fold out from it. So the base piece, as I'm looking at it, will be just identical to what I see in my plan view. It'll be 50 in length and it'll be 75 in width. So I'm going to plan it over here. I'll run a line up. The width of the box is going to remain constant, so I can measure 75. And that's, my box has to fit within that, my base, front and back panels have to fit within that width. So I'll start off with the base piece and draw a line to get me going. And like I said, it's 50 in depth. So that's my base piece. I might just draw this in pen just so it shows up on the camera a little bit clearer. Now there's going to be fold lines here, so I'm going to draw them as broken lines like so. So what that means is that there's another surface coming off that that will fold down. So that's my base piece and it's 50 by 75 in this particular case. 
Now I'll do it out exactly as I did when I was sketching out the same order. I have my two side pieces to the left and the right. So they will have to remain the same width as the base piece because obviously they have to match into it. So it's just a continuation of those lines out. If I look at the base pieces, they're 40 high and then there's a radius 25 semicircle. So to get a semicircle, I need to have the center of those panels. So I'll just break that up, draw a center line going out. So my first measurement will be 40 out. That'll be for the flat part of the side piece. And then I'll have a radius 25 to draw in also. Now those panels can be drawn in full because there's no fold line along them. They're just separate as they come out. I'll just curve in that in pen just so you can pick it up a bit clearer. Now there are my two side panels complete. I'll label them so I can keep track of everything. Folding down towards the bottom would be the front panel and I can see that it's going to match up so it should be 40 going out in this direction and it has to remain constant in width so I'll just box that off again I can draw that in full because there's no fold lines along it it's joined to the base piece and I label that as my front the back panel is going to be identical so it's a further 40 up. Again, the width remains constant. That's me done with the straightforward surface. What begins now is I'm gonna to have to have a surface which will wrap around that semicircular curve. So this is where my back stops on both sides. So what I'll do is I go over to my end view where I broke up my six segments. <clears throat> I go out to the circumference of the semicircle. I measure what one section would be. And I'm going to mark that off six times because I have six segments. So you're unwrapping it as if it would just go flat like so. So that's the six segments. When I get to the sixth one, I know that's where my lid is going to stop. Now with a curved surface when you break it up into segments like that you don't need to put in any fold lines because they aren't, they aren't actually folding they're just wrapping around so you can just draw that as a continuous line and you don't need to put in any broken lines along here it can just stay as a constant slightly. Just make sure that where you marked off your six segments is obvious. So don't have little dots. Make sure there's a nice stroke of the compass each time. Again, just to make it very obvious that you have broken it up correctly. So I have my back piece complete and my lid will wrap around like so. That would be a development question. Um, a lot of the time there won't be any curved surface, but I said I'd just include them because that can come up especially at the higher end of, the, of this topic, those type of questions will be asked.